In this video, I will show you the best Photoshop workspace that you can ever find and we're gonna optimize the workspace the best way possible. This is a method that I have found recently and I've tried it and it's proven to increase your productivity and speed since you have a whole lot cleaner screen and a whole lot less shit to deal with. There are a lot of windows and panels in Photoshop, which it will take you only a few minutes just to put them in the right order and arrange them and organize them, but it will save you a ton of time later on because you won't have to see a mess in your user interface face when you are working on a project and eventually this will help you to boost the fuck up and at the end if you like this video make sure to give me a thumbs up and also comment down below on what you want to see in the future videos and also subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any other great tutorials in the future if you want more free tutorials make sure to check my tutorials playlist which i'm going to put the link in the top right corner of the screen feel free to take a look This is probably the interface that most of you guys are seeing right now. This is how you've been using Photoshop for years. It is the Essentials Workspace. And have you ever thought of changing it and customizing it to your own taste? Today we're gonna push this to its limits and I'm gonna give you the best workspace and setup that you can ever have in Photoshop to optimize it for your productivity and speed up your workflow multiple times. The first thing you need to do is to clean up your trashy toolbar. There are a shit ton of tools that you have never used and you will never used in your lifetime so why do you keep them there tools like the single row marquee tool or the artboard tool are you ever gonna use them if yes man get out of here but if you are like me and you never use these tools anymore just clean them up it makes your toolbar look smaller and cleaner and it also makes it run faster that's weird but it's true so go to edit toolbar and just drag and drop each tool you know you're never gonna use tools like the artboard tool the single row marquee tools for me the magnetic lasso tool the slice select tool the frame tool the 3d material eyedropper tool the color sampler tool the note tool the ruler tool the count tool the content aware move tool the red eye tool, the pencil tool, the color replacement tool, the pattern stamp tool, the art brush tool, and the history brush tool, the magic eraser tool, and the background eraser tool, and also the 3d material drop tool. And all these trash tools have been sitting in your toolbar and you never took care of it. Come on. Alright, after you have cleaned up your toolbar successfully, it's time to start moving these panels around and put them in the best order so that we have the most possible space available for our creative process. And I'm gonna show you how. So go to Window Workspace and create a new workspace and give it a name. And make sure to include the keyboard shortcuts, menus, and toolbar. Now it's time to move these panels around and put them in the right order. If you can't move them, make sure you have not locked the workspace unintentionally. And this is what I have found to be the best arrangement of the panels in Photoshop. So take out all your panels and move them in the center and let's rearrange them all together. Just like that, take your toolbar out and take your color panel out and take your layers panel out and also all your adjustments or any extra panels that you have. One thing that bugged the hell out of me the most was why do we have the layers panel and the channels panel and the paths, the colors, the swatches, the properties, the adjustments, pretty much all the windows and stuff on the right side and we have the toolbar on the left like for god's sake photoshop why shouldn't we have them all in the same place so we don't have to keep moving to the left and right all the time and we can have a more organized interface seriously what the fuck are you doing so the first thing i did was i moved my toolbar to the right side of the screen and i can't be happier that i did but here's the thing when you're moving your toolbar to the right side if you move it too close to the edge you're gonna see a blue mark which represents that it's going to snap to the side but do not let it snap because actually if it snaps to the side of the screen it's gonna take up more space and we don't want that so just move it so close but enough that it won't snap to the side and that's it then you can move your color panel over there if you don't use swatches close them if you don't use any of these other extra panels just close them and here's the thing i do not understand the people that still use this puddle of colors it's not accurate. 
just click on these three lines and choose another thing like HSP or the color wheel that is a whole lot more accurate than just a square of colors and people are always explaining about why I can't choose the proper color for my pieces man just first get your color panel looking correct with this HSP color panel you're gonna see the percentages of hue saturation and brightness and in my opinion it is a whole lot more accurate so you can use both versions of it there's a version with the color wheel and there's a version without the color wheel which takes a little less space if you want more space but just get rid of the default color puddle and use this one and then move your layers panel if you do not use any of these tabs feel free to get rid of it for example i do not use paths that much so i'm going to close it i'm going to keep the layers and the channels and i'm going to put them over here and extend them from the bottom so i have more uh, layers panel and again just don't let it snap to anything leave your toolbar the color panel and the layers panel float in the air just don't let it snap because it will eventually take up a little more space you might not notice it but it will i have measured it Are you serious and it actually it's actually proven that it takes a little more space it might not be that much but we are optimizing this interface for best performance and i have my brushes windows over here next to my layers panel and my brush settings at the bottom too and you already know that you can also resize the brushes windows and you can also resize the size of each individual brush with this slider at the bottom so if you have a ton of brushes like me make sure to pull the slider all the way to the left so you have the most brushes in your view when you are looking at your pen and I also use uh, the adjustments windows and whenever i want to create an adjustment layer i use those windows and i recommend you do so it's a lot quicker than going through the list of all these adjustment layers and looking for the adjustment layer you want uh, just have the adjustments windows open and choose your adjustment layer from here you can close it whenever you want and i also have my properties over here if you use any other windows or extensions feel free to add it to this stack over here and to keep it at your hand so you don't have to open it from the windows menu again i use only brushes brush settings and properties so i'm going to keep them beside my layers panel so i have quick access to them now look at this i have all this free space on my left and i can use it for my references or anything so let me just quickly crop this uh, to the most common ratio for instagram which is four by five and let's just say we are working on a project which we are going to post on our instagram page later on so the canvas is going to be four by five right here and, and look at this free space on the left side oh my man it's just driving me crazy and i could use this space to bring up my references my inspirations or even my stock photos which i'm going to show you right now real quick so i have brought up my references over here or my stock photos or anything and the cool part is that i can just quickly drag and drop them onto my canvas directly from here so i just need to copy and paste them on my canvas and there you go i can start manipulating real quick and this is what i named being efficient and fast at what you do this is going to speed up your workflow multiple times i have tried it myself and it really works so you might as well just want to give it a try this is amazing and by the way for my references i am using a free software called pure ref uh, it's 100 percent free and it's a great one so i highly recommend you download it you can use it to pull up your references so you don't have to switch between windows anymore just to take a look at your inspirations or references even if you have a bunch of stock photos and you want to put them together and keep them to your side you can use pure ref or even you want to create a mood board storyboard or anything this tool is awesome so just go to pureref.com and just download it it's awesome now it's time to allocate some specific shortcuts to the most common tools that you use because as you know there are some options and tools in photoshop which do not have any specific shortcuts or the shortcuts are too garbage so we're gonna change it to improve our workflow and one of the things that i use a lot i mean all of the time is the foreground color picker and i have assigned the shortcut n for it as you can see so uh, you can do the same thing just if you use the color picker a lot and you use the foreground color so much just assign a shortcut feel free to choose anything and another tool that i use so much is the smudge tool and the smudge tool i have assigned the shortcut m for it and whenever you want to assign a shortcut it's going to give you an error which says it's gonna interfere with other tools which i don't care because as you know m is a shortcut for the marquee tools in photoshop and i don't give a shit about marquee tools so i have just replaced it with the smudge tool which i use a lot and you can do the same for all your favorite tools assign a shortcut for them and you can also go to your application menus and assign 
find a shortcut to the most common menus that you use because as you may or may not know solid color is not an adjustment layer that's why if you open up your adjustment layer windows you cannot find solid color or if you go to layer new adjustment layer you can't see solid color but if you go to new fill layer you can see solid color pattern and gradient because these three are fill layers not adjustment layers and because I use solid color a lot I have assigned the shortcut to it so I can quickly access it because I don't have it in my adjustment layer windows so if you want to do the same and assign shortcut to your solid color adjustment layer I better say solid color fill layer go to edit keyboard shortcuts application menus and navigate to layer new fill layer and choose your shortcut as you can see I have put control X and again control X is an already taken shortcut is for cutting stuff and putting it in your PC memory which I don't really care about so I have assigned control X to my solid color and I'm happy and with these new shortcuts each time I press N I have my foreground color picker quickly popping up and each time I press control X I have my solid open and I can choose any color and these can magnificently boost up your workflow trust me and that was it for today's tutorial i hope you learned something new and now you can watch any of these tutorials of mine just click on it and you'll go directly to the video well see you next week pal till then take care and peace out